couple more for you, John, because um, obviously we're all awaiting um, this podcast from Micah Parsons where he's going to clarify his statements a little bit more from yesterday. But at the end of the day, Micah Parsons is still going to be a Dallas Cowboy. Kind of also, he kind of threw that in there. Kind of, did he just retire Zach Martin too? Like Zach Martin last year? I'm like, wait, did Zach Martin tell us he's his last season? But moving forward, Micah Parsons does have a contract situation that will still need to be resolved. And so I ask you, what do we see happen first? Is the contract for Micah Parsons coming down or obviously a new head coach uh, for the Dallas Cowboys? Oh, I mean, with the way things are heading, it's going to be tough for them not to go in a different direction at head coach. Mm -hmm. And so I think, like you said, Micah knows he's not going anywhere. Uh, Jerry Jones loves Micah. He loves, you know, he loves players that can stir it up. He probably doesn't mind at all that he's doing this podcast. J Jerry doesn't mind any of that. I, I've always believed some of his favorite players are the ones that not only are there are, are some of the best Cowboys players, but they're the ones that like to stir it up the most, you know? And so because of that, I, I know I don't see a time where Mike has gone. There's a lot of talk, you know, over the last, you know, year or so about what if the Cowboys tried to trade Micah and get a boatload of picks and try and rebuild through that. Jerry's not doing that. Jerry's not getting rid of Mike, Mike Parsons. And Micah Parsons knows he's not going anywhere. And let's be honest, Micah Parsons loves the Cowboys for their brand as well. He doesn't want to go anywhere else. He was crying in the draft room when it was becoming possible that the Cowboys were going to be the team that got him. He wanted to go to the Cowboys more than anywhere because here, that's the thing. Like, the brand is also huge. Like, there's a lot of things, like, Micah Parsons does and says that if he's doing this in Jacksonville, they're not as big as – of a, of a headline and but with the Cowboys it's a big deal and he feeds into that now the argument can be made I don't know how much that lends itself to winning championships but you can also say since they drafted Micah Parsons up until this season they were 12 wins 12 wins 12 wins he clearly is a good player on the field but there is a part where you're want you wonder is this causing more distractions than are needed you know, John, I, I hate to throw salt on the Cowboys wound, but I'm going to throw some salt on the Cowboys wound because yesterday, obviously, Ezekiel Elliott, six carries, 22 yards. Then you look on the opposite side, Saquon Barkley had 14 carries, 66 yards, and you see how impactful of a running back that acquisition was for the Philadelphia Eagles. And it also points back to the Dallas Cowboys and not acquiring Derrick Henry. I know you've heard this storyline, this narrative all season long, but in a team that was going supposedly all in, and to that be something that has really held them back is their rushing attack. What do the Cowboys think or how do they handle that going forward with Ezekiel Elliott, which seems to be sort of a problem? He said he's missed meetings. He's just not all in. Like, he's not the same Zeke anymore. And also it starts to seem like he may be a problem within the locker room. How does how does this end this uh, re uh, uh, this reconnection between Ezekiel Elliott and the Cowboys? Jerry loves Zeke, so that's a big part of this as well. Uh, the owner and general manager wants him there, so the owner and general manager is going to get what he wants. So I, because of that, I don't see uh, – I see Zeke making it at least to the end of the season. Um, but pointing back to the offseason, you bring up Derrick Henry. I mean, they obviously made a huge mistake by not putting more resources into running back, uh, whether it be the draft the last two years. They knew last year that they were only going to have Tony Pollard for one more year. Uh, they probably should have drafted a running back earlier last year. And when they didn't, they probably needed to do it this year. And, uh, and, it, and it, that was a huge mistake. And I'm not saying that Derrick Henry would be having the same season he's having in Baltimore, but he'd be a lot better than what they have right now. And the fact that even if you couldn't afford Derrick Henry, the fact that they didn't talk to him or talk to his agent about signing him when he clearly really wanted to come to Dallas, he has an off season home in Dallas it, it's hard to look past the fact that that he has the same agent as Dak Prescott mm. and Dak Prescott's agent has <laughs> won two massive battles against Jerry Jones that I wonder if anybody in the business world has won the battles that <laughs> Dak's agent has won against Jerry. And so there was definitely a period in the off season where there wasn't a lot of communication back and forth. And so it's hard to believe that they just didn't pick up the phone too. Cause they're like, we're not dealing with this situation right now. And so it looks bad. It, it really does, especially in every, 
week that goes by and you see Derrick Henry playing as well as, as he is, that it just makes it worse. And then also just the fact of other teams that had a running back in the off season. And so, uh, yeah, that was a huge swing and miss by the Cowboys, but it wasn't just running back. They needed to do way more in the off season. And other than really bringing in Eric Kendricks at linebacker, they didn't do very much to replace the guys they lost in free agency. And that's certainly one of the biggest reasons that they are where they are right now. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.